Hello there, Internet. My name is Adam from Powerbelt 3D, and lately I have been getting more and more questions about a step-by-step -step process to get your first prints off the Powerbelt 3D Zero. This is a topic that I've definitely considered making a video about in the past, but the truth is my methods have changed over time since we first started shipping printer kits, and so I didn't want to make something that would immediately be obsolete. But I've been using this method since the beginning of 2021, and so far I'm really happy with it and happy to recommend it to all of you. The core of what we're going to be talking about today is how to set up Idea Maker to use with your Powerbelt 3D Zero. See, back in the day, I initially recommended Black Belt Cura as the slicing software of choice, and I still think it's a decent option if you like the Cura interface and want to use it. To give you just a little bit of a backstory, I first started using Black Belt Cura back in 2018 when I first started developing the Powerbelt 3D Zero. Um, and I know that it's free software, so I don't have a ton of room to complain here, uh, but I've just never been totally super happy with it. Black Belt Cura has crashed itself countless times when it's trying to slice a model for me. Um, in general, it tends to be pretty slow and laggy when I'm using it. Like, for example, when I switch from the per slicing parameters tab over to the USB control tab, um, or if I try to change a setting um, and then I hit tab, it'll take a few seconds to think and kind of update. Um, so those were all kind of irritating. Uh, but really, my biggest complaint was that after I installed Black Belt Cura, I couldn't go back and launch the normal Cura that Ultimaker distributes. The biggest reason this bugged me was because the standard version of Cura is updated way more frequently than Black Belt Cura, so it felt like I was using software that was three, four years old. Maybe I missed something that was really easy to fix, but I'm not the biggest computer genius, I'm a mechanical engineer, and so as a result I just started using Black Belt Cura for most of my slicing, uh, and also keeping Slick 3R installed on my machine in case I wanted to, to change some things. I wasn't able to do it in Cura. So far, I have found Idea Maker to be really useful, not just for my belt printers, but also for her, my more normal 3D printers. Uh, and I found that their interface is really easy to pick up, um, and they have features that would be very competitive with every other slicer that I've tried. I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list of things that I like in Idea Maker, uh, but just a handful uh, would be modifier meshes, modifier meshes. Uh, support blocking, and it has XY compensation for things like holes and outer contours if they're being uh, a little too big or a little too small based on your nozzle diameter. But probably my favorite feature is just being able to hit Control c and Control v to duplicate a model once. Um, I know it's a little thing, but it goes a long way for me compared to having to right-click and duplicate X number of times every time that I want a new model. Anyway, Without any further delay, let's dive into setting up Idea Maker for use with your Powerbelt 3D Zero. As of Idea Maker release 4.1, angled axis conveyor belt 3D printing is a standard feature that we can set up. So let's get started. So, I'm installing Idea Maker on a brand new computer, so if you've never used Idea Maker before, this process should be really similar to what you're going to see. Um, all I did was Google uh, Idea Maker 4.1, and this is the page that I was brought to. Uh, we can get rid of all the marketing stuff, um, and then in 4.1 they are really talking about uh, a really cool texture feature that they added. Um, so we can kind of scroll through this. So, you can look at raise3d.com slash download. This looks like the actual URL that you should go to. 
Um, I'm using a Windows machine, so we'll open that right up. Once it's finished downloading, we can open the installer and we'll have to probably click through a whole bunch of prompts. Scratch that Adam from the future here. Um, that was absolutely my absolutely my intention to show you start to finish on a brand new machine. Um, but alas, my screen recording software uh, did some weird stuff. Uh, so instead, I will be showing you uh, from where I sit now uh, with a couple profiles already imported into Idea Maker. Uh, the process is super simple. Um, it won't take too long to explain. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, um, I'm in a profile for my Monoprice V2, but we want to add a new profile for the PowerBelt 3D0. So we're going to go to the play button over here and click the settings icon next to the printer. And from here we can hit import. and we will find the printer file on our computer that we downloaded. Here you can, we'll select the printer file. All of these settings look all right. Here you can see uh, we have the PowerBelt 3D0. Uh, we have our nozzle diameter, width, depth, height. This depth is our infinite axis, the Z axis. Um, and the area in Idea Maker where you can configure the belt settings um, is in the advanced tab, just this checkbox right here, and then you can set the angle. The angle for the PowerBelt 3D0 is a nominal 35 degrees. Sometimes when you're playing with the accuracy of your machine, you might want to increase or decrease that just a little bit. Um, but I generally keep it at 35 degrees um, and don't have uh, too many issues. We can hit OK. And because I already have a PowerBelt 3D0 um, installed, it looks like I'm getting an error, so I'll just name it PowerBelt02, and then we can hit Save. Idea Maker has profiles for the printer, the extruder, and then the material that goes with that extruder. So um, I'm not a big fan of having all of these different long names for things, so instead we'll just select PETG, and then we have to have a filament template for that extruder. So again, we can go to more and we can do import from local disk. And here we'll select the .bin file for the filament. This is another thing that you can download. Again, I'll make sure links are in the description of this video where you can go to get that. And that is about all there is to it. So we can close that out and now we'll drag a file in and slice it. I always have a folder of just testing calibration models. Um, I don't know if that's something that everyone has who does 3D printing or if it's just me. Um, if you have a similar folder, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, now all we have to do is you can either hit start slicing up here or I like to come back to the play button. Um, these are all quick settings that you can change on the fly without needing to actually save over the profile. Um, I really like that it has things like layer height, shells, infill, supports. Um, those are the settings that I find myself changing most often. Clearly Idea Maker uh, figured that out for their users. Um, so now we can hit slice. And from here, uh, they give you a few different options. I like to run my printers off of Octoprint, and so that is my default export option. But you can also hit export and just save it locally to your computer, then put that on an SD card and plug that into your printer um, and run it uh, without it being connected um, or controllable uh, from a computer. Um, we're not actually going to print this cube today, so instead we will hit preview just to check out the layers and make sure everything looks okay. Here we can scroll through the layers. You can see the angled slicing with the gyroid infill. Um, here we're using the arrow keys just to move through the layers and uh, everything looks good. So if I was going to print this now, I would just hit upload to Octoprint um, and then uh, go on printing from there. Right now I have both a PLA and PETG profile for Idea Maker. I have a few others um, that are a little less fine-tuned also for Black Belt Cura. Um, and again, you can download all of those using the link in the description. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful or helpful, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. Um, and if you are interested in other conveyor belt related 3D printing content, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are at all interested in more insight into the wide world of 3D printing, both in the hobby and industry space, I started a podcast over on the 3D Print Authority YouTube channel. You are welcome to check that out as well. Until next time, Happy printing.